Good evening. Thanks for being here tonight. They are among the world's top authorities on Pacific salmon, and they have gathered this week on Vancouver Island. The American Fisheries Society's general meeting and the Northeast Pacific Pink and Chum Salmon Workshop are being held in Nanaimo right now. And in light of climate change and rapidly declining stocks, scientists and fishery managers are hoping to come up with ideas now, sharing their knowledge and keeping ahead of the many changes and the challenges that face salmon on our coast. A News Mid-Island Bureau Chief Jonathan Bartlett was at the conference today. He joins us now with more from our Mid-Island Bureau. Jonathan. Hudson, the challenges facing salmon in light of climate change are complex. Ocean temperature, low river levels. Understanding those challenges could be key to their survival. You can see that over 1972... It's an event bringing together some of the best minds in the world who are working towards the survival of salmon in our waters. Do a little math, and the fish returning to the Fraser River last year paints along is 25 to 30 million. For three days this week, both the American Fishery Society Washington, B.C. Chapter General Meeting, as well as the Northeast Pacific Pink and Chum Salmon Workshop, are being held at the Vancouver Island Conference Centre. But in terms of what happens between meetings is that people are constantly working on new developments in science and technology and how that science is applied for management of our fisheries in the Pacific Northwest. Topics discussed, conservation, management, enhancement, marine ecology, and the future of salmon in uncertain times. I think the, some of the most important things uh, range from how climate change may be affecting our, our resources and the fisheries for those resources. Uh, we're also uh, looking at new technology, new tools that fishery scientists have to use. Understanding the changes in our oceans due to climate change is one of the most pressing things scientists need to gain an understanding of. Changing water levels, temperature and flow in rivers all affect salmon. The biggest thing for Pink and Chum is to get the governments to agree to programs such as the North Pacific Ocean Studies. And that if we can really start programs going on now, then we'll be able to monitor what change actually means. In the case of last year's collapse of the Fraser River run, scientists hope to be able to predict similar collapses in the future. What possibly caused the loss of so many Fraser sockeye and how could we not see that signal? Well, it may be that we're simply not looking at the right time and place. Uh, we probably could see it with the tools we have, but we're not out there doing the appropriate surveys or you know, we simply have to put more effort into understanding some of the dynamics. Contrary to public opinion, there's an abundance of chum and pinks in the ocean, and they can act as a barometer for other species in more serious trouble. Brian Riddell of the Pacific Salmon Foundation believes there should be an international year of the salmon that would help raise awareness and help convince governments of the need to fund the studies of the changes in our oceans and to encourage the survival of wild stocks. Hudson? Can't underestimate where salmon fit into British Columbia's past and its future and its economy and its culture. Big part of our life. It is. All right, Jonathan Bartlett reporting. Jonathan, thanks. Thank you.